Hello everyone. Uh, today I'll be talking about how you could move a virtual machine from one server either to another or to something external like a NAS or a SAN. So I thought I'd cover that. And of course, if you have uh, your storage separate from your host, it's certainly going to help you out because it opens up a whole lot of possibilities for things like uh, high availability, HA, that's one of the requirements for it, or I shouldn't say requirement, but it's, it's certainly the way that is recommended to do it. There's always uh, lots of different uh, pieces and add-ons out there, so of course this is like a big huge Lego set and you could do a whole bunch of different things a whole bunch of different ways. And this is uh, basically what I want to address today is if you don't have a vSphere uh, vCenter, so if you don't have uh, the portion that usually large or medium-sized companies tend to have, or even if you have essentials, you tend to have EV center. But what if you don't have one of those? You perhaps purchased uh, one or two standard licenses and you feel limited or you have a VM and you just want to know what to do with it. If you've got a workstation, I believe that I showed that before how you could export. Well, today we'll be taking a look at a server. This is not going to be a long video. Just want to basically give you a bit of tools on how you can easily manipulate what you've got in your environment, uh, potentially to either archive something or just to uh, run it off uh, some other, uh, that's it, some other media or some other uh, repository, or in this case, data store is the correct word. So let's go ahead. So what I've done is uh, basically here is a QNAP and what you do in QNAP is if you go to the control panel, um, I mean, this is not meant to be specifically about QNAP, but you'll notice that you've got options in here. You've got, for example, uh, Win, Mac, NFS. So you've got the NFS in here. And by the way, the QNAP will also do iSCSI and iSCSI also is available on VMware. So you've got a couple of ways of connecting to uh, basically a, a, an external share. So if you were strictly connecting, like a, your, your VM had Windows, for example, and you wanted to connect to a NAS, you'd be using something like SMB. So there's various ways of doing this. But when you're dealing with data stores, you're going to be want to stick to NFS or iSCSI. iSCSI is a little more complicated to set up, so we're going to go ahead and use the NFS today. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to our host. So right here inside your, uh, this is an ESXi, this is a 7.02, I believe, on this, uh, this one. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go where it says storage. So click on it, and this is what appears. And what we want to do is go ahead and click on new data store. And this is where you've got some options. So you can create you can add an existence. So the point is the top ones here are really for local storage. So if you have typical server, usually have the ability to put in, um, I mean, variety of things, two and a half, three, excuse me, two and a half, three and a half uh, inch drives, for example, and VME drives and whatnot, depending on what you got, what brand and so forth. But those are all local. So if you wanted to have something that was off, like in my case, on a QNAP, a NAS, and you could also uh, use this with a SAN. So you'd go ahead and say mount NFS. And this is what we've set up on the QNAP already. And what it's going to do is it's going to ask you for a name. And actually what I've done is I've gone ahead and practiced a little bit before just to make sure this ran. Because it's the problem with these things is it looks simple. And then you try it while you're recording and it doesn't work. So, by the way, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and, of course, subscribe. That really, really helps us out. Thank you very much to all subscribers out there. We appreciate it. So, let's go ahead and so you type this in, type in the IP address. Uh, one, uh, okay, so this is my QNAP. So, and I named the NFS on the QNAP DS1. I used NFS4 and what that means is it's going to ask me for a username and a password which I also set up on the QNAP previously. So at that point I just have to make sure that I type in the correct credentials. I do next. Now this is going to take a little while and it's going to go ahead and you're going to see on the bottom. Well, did I already do it? Oh, there you go. Okay, so we're connected. Uh, so now imagine that I have a virtual machine and I want in the future to be able to um, run it on some other machine or I, I just I'm running out of room, for example, locally. I want to store it or I, I want to be able to run it 
from somewhere else, in this case on my NAS, well, I could simply go to my Windows 2019. This is just a, a sample machine that I've made. So if you right click, you're gonna notice is you've got some options uh, in here. Now, if you're expecting to see the button that says migrate, that would be in the vCenter. So that is sort of, I guess, the official way of doing it, the easier way of doing it. What I was gonna suggest is if you want to move this and you don't have the rest of the stuff, you didn't create a vCenter, you didn't, you know, you, you're not, uh, perhaps this is just a lab or perhaps you have a company that has very limited resources and you don't have the extra disk space to have a vCenter, or I mean, there, I'm sure there's reasons not to have all that um, by default. So if that's your case, well then what you can do is go to your NAS. So you, okay, so one of the first ways you can do this is you can export uh, and basically create um, an OVF template. And what that will do is it will take all the files and move that to somewhere else. And that is something that you could then move, copy and so forth. The other thing that you can do is you can, I just did this and okay, so let's see, you go to the browser, you go to your machine, and then what I'm going to do, let me just see if you can see all that, a little small, but basically what, what I've got is I've got the option on my windows, and again, these are just test machines, so you've got the options to delete, move, and copy. So if I wanted to make a copy, then I would simply click on copy, it would say, hey, where do you want to send it? and I want to send it to the NAS, and in my case, it's already here because I just did this previously. So then it will go ahead and copy. It will take a, a few minutes. And of course, if it's a very large VM, it might take a while, but the point is, is I was able, using that, to transfer it over. Now, you'll say, okay, well, l let's pretend now that I'm, I'm just going to remove this from my inventory. So I'm going to go ahead, and I don't think it, it clicked on, uh, let's click on here. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say, uh, let's see if I can find it, uh, unregister. So I'm going to go ahead and unregister this virtual machine. So that is going to go away. So I'm going to lose it. Now what happens is I've removed my win 2019 that was locally stored. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to add or register. In this case, I want to register. So I'm going to say register an existing machine, do next. And now I can go ahead and I can select this Windows 2019. And this is the copy that is running off my QNAP. So of course what that implies, or what that means, is that uh, from this moment on, basically this copy is the one that's going to be active and the local one really I could go and delete it at that point or it could stay there for, I don't know, emergency sakes or, or whatnot. But I would say select and select it here go next do finish and if you wait it should pop up here and now you can click on it and if you want to start it go ahead and press power on and it says hey what have you done to it and I'm gonna say hey I you know what I moved it or I'm gonna say I doesn't so I copied it so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then it's gonna go ahead and start. Now keep in mind that when you're doing this, uh, you should have appropriate uh, you know, network speeds and you should like, we've got 10G for example, and the NAS has a 10G as well. So everything's relatively fast. And of course you wanna make sure that if you have a NAS, that if you've got mechanical drives and locally you had SSDs or NVMe drives, you will see a degradation in speed because now it's got to go and get it and it has to. In larger environments, of course, you probably want to restrain or, or isolate, is a better word, uh, keeping all of, you know traffic for storage separate uh, from the rest of your network so that you don't have um, a lot of information going back and forth and, and really hindering you know, your one or two switches perhaps that you're using for everyone. Uh, if you can separate that, that's probably a best practice uh, somewhere out there. So there are tons and tons of documents out there that show you the best practices, by the way, for all of these things. And uh, by all means, I mean, go ahead and use those. Uh, let's see if we can actually click on console and hey, it's already started. So, okay, so what I've got now is I have my my little machine here, which there's nothing in there to really show you. But the point is, is this is now running 
off of the QNAP. So that's all I had to do. With iSCSI, uh, it, it's going to give you a similar result. Like I said, it's just a more, slightly more laborious uh, methodology. And in some cases, uh, you might get better speeds from iSCSI. It all depends on what you're using. Again, I don't know if you've got fiber, if you've got, you know, so I'm assuming that it, you know, someone listening to this level of a video, you probably have a more basic setup. So this is probably the best and easiest way to go at this or about this. So apart from that, um, I guess that's it. So we're running it off there. Uh, if you had, let me show you a little graphic that I've got here and it, to move from here. Okay, here we go. So if you wanted to have high availability, Basically what you would do is, look, we took our little server here, this was the, the Windows, and what we did is we moved it over to a NAS. So we basically took the physical machine here, moved it down into storage down here. Uh, it is still using the resources of host one for in this example. What that means is host one is still using its processors and its memory and its network card, obviously, in order to run this machine that is physically on a drive, on a QNAP or the NAS in this case. Now, if you wanted to move a step uh, into, I guess, a, a more uh, stable and a more secure environment, what you would want to do is add a second host or, or more hosts. And then at that point is the second host, just so you understand, would have the ability to also connect to the NAS. So what that implies is if your host, let, let's say we don't have a whole lot of budget, your host number one, needs major maintenance, I don't you want to add memory, you want to do something, well, what you could do is close the machine on the host one, shut it down, go to host two, start it, and then while it's running on host two, you can take off uh, the power to host one, take it apart, do whatever you need to. I mean, this is the manual way of doing it. Obviously, you can't automate this. I'm just trying to keep this, uh, I guess, as uh, inexpensive as I can. So obviously, when you want to have this type of scenario, then you'll need a proper license. You'll need to have uh, a standard license or an Enterprise Plus license in order to do this. Now, if you're using Essentials, uh, then this will not work, especially if you're using hypervisor, then you won't be able to have access to the HA functions, the high availability. So there is an essential plus that will provide that, and that's a maximum of three hosts. So that's certainly something you can look into. Uh, you'll notice that the price is very steep compared to the essentials. And um, at that point, you may want to just get uh, you know, two standard hosts plus the vCenter standard as well. Because don't forget, you'll need that. And if you're buying the standard, the vCenter does not come with it. So you'll need to add that. So so this is sort of an end game or what you should be striving to as, I won't say minimum, but that's traditionally or, or usually why individuals and companies want to go to virtualization is to be able to provide this type of redundancy, this ability to have something shut down or break and be able to bring something back quickly. So in this case, if we have the ability to bring back that virtual machine, perhaps it's, you know, it's critical, it's an ERP system, a CRM system, uh, uh, whatever it is, could be for email, could be an exchange server, whatnot, um, then you have the ability to bring it back. Now, how manual that is depends on your budget. In some cases, smaller clients uh, may not have um, you know, may not want to spend thousands of dollars to set something like this up. And they say, well, if all I have to do is go on the other server and just, you know, do what we just did, basically discover the machine, run it, and that's all there is to it. It's not terribly long. Uh, again, depending on what kind of machine it is and how uh, full of re you know, resources it needs and whatnot, it might be more laborious than what I'm making it sound like. But the point is, is it's not terribly complicated. And even, even in a time of crisis, it can be documented as to how to do this fairly quickly. Um, you know, I say quickly, it could be minutes or hours, depending on how huge and, and complicated your environment is, because you may not have a single VM, you may have a whole bunch of stuff. Now, keep in mind, of course, when you're doing it this way, the nice part is it's not like having two servers and you suddenly say, hey, I, I'm just going to restore everything to my second server because there's been a, a major problem with the first one. 
what if you don't have disk space on the second one? Well, now you've got a problem. Now you've got to clean it out, and all of a sudden you're in crisis mode, and you're trying to uh, make room, and you've got to, you know, what, take some VMs off? Do you have to archive them? You have to, and then there's the delay of having to save them off and put them back on. So you kind of go down that rabbit hole, and you're wasting a lot of time just moving things around. In this scenario where everything is off, I'm saying a QNAP, but you know, it could be uh, whatever you have for a NAS, uh, Buffalo, I and mean, there's tons of, of brands out there. And what you want to do is, uh, I mean, the space is already allocated. It's already living on those disks. And of course, I encourage you to have fast disks, SSDs, or, and so forth on your NAS or your SAN. Um, so it's a network attached storage, by the way, if nobody understands what NAS means. And um, that should be it. So that's about it for my little rant here. I hope it helped someone out. Uh, please leave some comments below. I'd love to hear about your environment and uh, let me know if this is uh, roughly, you know, why you're listening to this video and if this was helpful. And I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. Really appreciate you watching. You can reach us, of course, by visiting us at www.ctobob.com. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.